Am I the idiot for telling my mom she should have gotten an abortion? Hello. I'm an 18-year-old female. My parents are a 36-year-old female and a 45-year-old male. He is my stepdad. They met when I was in first grade. After my currently 12-year-old sister was born, I thought my parents would have finally had enough and not have any more children. I have a younger brother and also older step-siblings who have moved out years ago. However, the entire family was thrown for a loop in April of 2021 when my mom announced her pregnancy. My baby brother was born that September. My mom had promised to my siblings and I that we would not have to take care of the baby. However, eventually that turned out not to be the case. I spent my junior and senior year of high school having to play mum for my brother because my parents, either one, had to work too, wanted to party, I couldn't join any after-school clubs or hang out with friends because I had to come home and watch the baby. My father has been off work for nearly a year and he barely watches his own child. He always makes up some excuse to be out of the house. My little sister is unreliable and my younger brother got a pass from babysitting because his football career and social life is more important than anything I have going on, apparently. If I made even a slight mention of being annoyed, then I'd get screamed at for being ungrateful. Most of my friendships fizzled out because I was too busy babysitting to see or talk to them. It was incredibly stressful and I was happy to graduate. My parents tried to keep me from going to college under the guise of me not being ready, but I know the truth was that they would no longer have a free babysitter. I took out loans and I currently live in a dorm. Flash forward to this Labor Day weekend, I decided to go home because I kind of missed my parents and I missed my dog. We went to a barbecue and afterwards my mom asked me to watch the baby while she went to a party. I told her I wasn't feeling quite well, it was very hot and my mom forced me to stay outside. She blew up at me and told me to stop being ungrateful and that ever since I went to college I've left her with nobody to watch my brother and she has to do everything herself. And I got upset because it's not my fault my dad is a shitty father, she never makes my brother do anything, and she's unable to be a stay-at-home mom because she left her job to try and start a business in the middle of the pandemic. So I said, well, maybe if you got an abortion like you were planning to, you wouldn't have to deal with any of this. She got really upset and went downstairs to her and my dad's room. I left and went to my grandmother's house the remainder of my stay. My brother called me and told me my mom and dad were upset and that maybe I could have said something else. I do feel bad now, but also slightly justified. I just don't think it's my fault my dad avoids taking care of his children, and my mom decided to listen to my hyper-religious aunt instead of considering what having a child would entail, especially since he was born during a very stressful time. So, am I the idiot? Now, here are the comments. Comment 1. Not the idiot. Your parents are being misogynistic and are parentifying you. A lot of parents would be devastated if their teenage daughter had a baby. In this case, your parents are the ones who did it to you. They forced you to sacrifice your friendships, extracurricular activities, and autonomy just so they didn't have to take care of the baby. Then they wanted you to give up on your future for their convenience. Your parents are the ungrateful ones for not valuing you as a person and not understanding what you went through because of them. Comment 2. Not the idiot. Your parents parentified you and should expect considerable blowback now that you are an adult and free of this nonsense. If your hyper-religious aunt thought your mother shouldn't get an abortion, she should have been the free babysitter, not you. It's not a child's responsibility to raise their siblings. Comment 3 not the idiot at all. No parent should ever force their child into doing their job. You're totally valid for saying that. Don't feel bad. You're right. She should have thought about what having another child would entail. And if she didn't want more kids, should have gotten some type of birth control. Now for the next story. I have been with her for a year and a half. We moved in together about two months ago. She works as a sign language interpreter, and I work as a software engineer. She makes about $60,000 per year, and I make $120,000 per year, with a side business making me about $3,000 extra per month. In the house, I pay most of the bills, including rent and utilities. 
I also pay for most groceries. She wasn't working for two months before I moved in, so I gave her a few months of no expenses so she could recover. But now she is working and making good money, but it seems that she doesn't feel obligated to contribute. For example, even though we spend a lot of money on groceries, we barely cook at home. I am always the one cooking anyway. Almost every week we're throwing food away. However, every day she will ask me what we're eating today or what I am going to feed her today. We will go eat out and I end up paying. She never pays for any of it. It feels like I am taking care of a child. First, I don't like the fact that she keeps asking me about what she is going to eat for the day and on top of that, I pay for it all the time. Every time we go out, just the two of us, it's $60 minimum. So pretty much, I spend $400 plus on us eating out per week. If I tell her that I don't want to eat with her on a specific day, sometimes I go to my parents and they offer me food, she will still ask me to order her food. Now here are the comments. Comment 1. I think this issue is bigger than just eating with her. You both have jobs. You should both be paying the bills. Maybe not 50 50ths as she earns half of what you do, but at the very least, she should be covering 25% of household bills and groceries. My advice is to open a joint account where you both transfer a specific amount of money every month to cover the bills and grocery shopping. You also need to both sit down every week and plan your meals so that you don't buy too much and waste food. You also need to talk about household chores. You say she expects you to cook, but does she clean? Do laundry? Not the idiot. But there's a need for some difficult conversations here. Comment 2. Not the idiot. Have a frank conversation with her that if you're paying all of the rent and utilities, and you're still cool with that, that she needs to cover all food for the both of you. If she doesn't like it, she can leave because obviously she's a mooch because that's more than fair. Comment 3. Have you talked to her about this? What are your future plans? And what is the financial perspective? Savings? What kind of budget do you suggest? Equal pay? 1-3. What is acceptable and what are the deal breakers? Edit. Not the idiot. Now, for the next story. My 43-year-old female. First name is hyphenated. I was born in the States to American parents whose first language is English. From my experience, hyphenated first names are rare for a lot of people I encounter. My dad taught French when I was born, so he wanted my name with the French spelling. It sounds pretentious, I know. Having a hyphenated first name has been a huge pain. When I spell my name, I have to say dash instead of hyphen because people think a hyphen is an apostrophe. But the thing that annoys me to no end is when people take the liberty of shortening my name to just the first part. For example, Jean-Claude shortened to Jean. So after years of just letting it go, I have started correcting people. I am polite about it. It is usually in a work setting, usually in reply to an email, and I say, my name is Jean-Claude, not Jean. Please don't call me Jean. My name is not Jean-Claude, but that was the first hyphenated name I thought of that isn't my actual name. Less the response has been positive, people are apologetic, but I sometimes feel like an A-H for correcting people. So, A-I-T-H. Now, here are the comments. Comment 1. I never shorten anyone's name unless I know they're fine with it. If they're a seven-syllable Susie, to use the hilarious term of another commenter, then that's the name I'm calling them. I've known a lot of Patricks and Michaels, for example, who go by their full name. No one calls them Pat or Mike because that's not what they want to be called. It's really not that difficult to respect the names people want to be known by. Comment 2. I have a longer first name. Think Jennifer. Some people want to call me a nickname. Think Jenny. I go by my long, full name, so I've gotten to where when people address me by the nickname that I don't go by, I answer, who, what, where. They correct themselves real fast, lol. Comment 3. It's fine to correct people. It's your name. My daughter has an Elizabeth Caroline in her class, and neither part can be omitted or shortened or else. If everyone around seven-syllable Susie can manage her name, people can manage Jean-Claude. 
Now for the next story. Using a throwaway for anonymity. Sorry. Okay, so a bit of background. My wife, 37-year-old female, and I, 39-year-old male, have a couple. 38-year-old male, 36-year-old female, we're friends with... Let's call us Mr. and Mrs. Brown and call them Mr. and Mrs. White. Mr. White and Mrs. Brown, my wife, are friendly, having some shared interests, and occasionally hang out together. This sometimes takes the form of sauna sessions together. Mr. White invites Mrs. Brown around about once a fortnight, and she goes about one out of four invites. This has always struck me as weird, as Mrs. Brown and Mrs. White were friends for four years before Mr. White was on the scene. This week, our son ended up in hospital with a leg infection, which required minor surgery. We have four kids, so Mrs. Brown stayed in hospital with our son while I stayed home with the rest of the kids. He is totally fine, by the way. Logistics have been tricky, but we made it work. And on one day, I asked Mr. White to watch two of the kids while I took the other to sport practice. This is where it got weird. Earlier in the day, I checked what Mrs. Brown wanted for dinner, and she told me a mutual friend of all four of us was bringing her dinner. I got a message from Mr. White saying he was heading out for the evening without saying where, and the kids were with Mrs. White. However, when I went to pick the kids up from Mr. and Mrs. White, I found out Mr. White was at the hospital with my wife. He had told the mutual friend he would take care of it. And while finding out where he was, his daughter said, He is taking your mom dinner because your dad didn't think to. Mrs. White expressed that she was annoyed as she would have preferred to go if the mutual friend couldn't. Even worse, he mentioned to my wife that he was surprised I hadn't sorted anything for dinner, which makes me think he'd said something in front of his daughter earlier. And then he hung around for too long. My wife described it as overstaying his welcome. Normally, I'd think it was pure generosity, but the fact he didn't tell me, and the comment he made to my wife, and the comment his daughter made, makes me feel a bit suspicious about it all. So, am I the idiot for misreading this situation? If not, should I address this with him? And does my wife bear any responsibility here? Thanks in advance for your advice. Now, here are the comments. Comment 1. Him. Disparaging you in front of your wife is sketchy as hell. He shows up offering to take her to dinner because her neglectful husband didn't is classic white knighting. He is definitely trying to put the moves on your wife. Comment 2. He's either after your missus or already has her. Sorry. I would never invite my mate's wife for a private sauna, and if I didn't, it would be for all, not one-on-one. -on -one. Definitely doing something fishy. Comment three. He's either trying to sleep with your wife or already is. Your wife should be shutting this down. Now for the next story. We, female, 26, male, 29, married for two months, we're at a dinner party at my husband's sister's, female, 33, and I found out that my husband was in love with his sister's friend, Jasmine, female, 33, for the longest time. I wasn't bothered by that. We met three years ago, and we both had lives before we met. What I didn't like is how Jasmine kept touching and kissing my husband on the cheek and saying she regretted dumping him. I didn't know what to do, and I didn't want to make a scene since Jasmine was already drunk and loud, so I just tried to stand between my husband and her. After a while, Jasmine shouted, Don't worry, if I wanted him, I could have had him. The music was loud, so not many heard Jasmine, my husband's sister, and me. My husband's sister kept telling Jasmine to shut up, but Jasmine said, No, I might as well know that she let me have him so I don't look this smug. I didn't say anything, and I wasn't smug at all, but mortified. Then she stood so close to me and told me that my husband texted with her the day before our wedding, and if she wanted, she could have easily told him to call off the wedding. I was shocked. When we got home, I confronted my husband about everything. About the hugging and kissing. He said she was drunk, so he didn't know what to do. About calling me pathetic? She called me pathetic for following my husband around because I didn't know anyone there. But his sister-in-law? And I'm very shy. He said that she was obviously jealous, so he didn't want to stoop to her level. About the texts before our wedding? 
He swore that they were innocent. He was nervous and she texted him, and he told her he was nervous and scared and nothing more. The texts were deleted. I was still very upset, and he told me he loved me and he was happy to have married me. I was still upset, so he told me to work on my self-esteem because I was being dramatic about a loser. I asked him if he would have married her if she didn't dump him, and he said yeah. Then he hastily said, because I wouldn't have known you. I asked him if he did, would he have chosen her? He just sat silent. I have been crying all week, switching between anger and pain in my heart. My husband loves my hair, so I made an appointment today and cut it very, very short. When he saw me, he was very angry and said I was an ah because I knew he loved my hair, and I cut it to get back at him. He called me a big baby and an ah, but I don't think I'm the A-H no matter the reason, because it is my hair and my choice. Now, here are the comments. Comment 1. Sounds like you got a breakup cut before the breakup instead of after. Everyone here might suck and would do with some form of therapy. Learn to talk to each other. Also, frick that sad, sloppy witch. You should just laugh and brush her off every time she tries talking to you like that next time and watch her melt down in front of everyone. Comment 2. I hope you realize this is about far more than your hair. It was definitely petty to do that, but it is your hair. Focus on the bigger issues you are having. You have lost trust in your husband. Based on what you wrote, it doesn't seem like it is fair, but I sense that there is more to this story. Comment 3. Everyone sucks here. Cutting your hair is fine. Cutting your hair to spite your new husband? Well, that's just immature. Go get counseling or spend some time with friends and family. Cutting your hair provided no solution. It just makes an already bad situation possibly more volatile. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day!